and everything just keeps piling up. More and more parts. I'm... Anyway, I'm going to work on the welding jig today. And uh, I need to get a rough idea. I don't want to i, I got to get my chunk of metal here. I don't feel like taking those two apart. They're basically scrap. Oh well. Uh, it'd just be more bother to clean that up, cut it, grind it, blah blah, all that kind of... I'm just going to start with another piece. So uh, I decided I could have this hanging over. This is the welding jig for the truck brackets. I could have that hanging over. It doesn't really... you know, if I really wanted it to be that small. But then I decided, well, let me go ahead and put it there. Just in case I want to put a hole there drill and tap that to uh, hold that down. So then I need a rough idea. I've got my line here and, and if I include the other video basically I want this clamp to be just past center because I want it to uh, touch down on you know at least three points. Uh, the two tabs basically and then maybe back here. So I want that clamp to be somewhere a little bit over. I don't want it right on the, the line here. So let's say that. So if this is about where it's going to get welded, then I can cut it off there. And let's let's make it a hair longer in case I change my mind. Oh. So let's see how long is that? That's eight and a half. All right, we'll make it. We'll just make it eight and a half. And what I'm going to have to do, too, is it's, if you can see here, it just barely clears here. Now, I want to, I think I want to machine this surface flat. Actually, I need to check it, but uh, in order to fit it in the vise, eight and a half is too long one way. It's basically six inches this way. It's a little too long, too. So I think what I'm going to do is cut uh, probably at least a half inch off each side here. Ooh. Ooh. Um, I just realized this bolt I'll end up with uh, cutting right through the thread if I try to. So I could cut off. I could cut off a little more on that side, I guess. I could take it to there and then cut off a good half inch. I'll have to measure and see what I can fit in the vise. Uh, push come to shove, you know it's going to be it's going to be sitting here like this basically. I can just simply you know, cut a notch in there to get myself the room on the underside. So that way, once it's clamped, I can weld the top, I can flip it over and weld the bottom. That's uh, that's the goal there without having to uh, move it. Well, originally, I was thinking, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut some off on the bandsaw down both sides there, but it really brought it in tight because this, this is only a 5-inch uh, vise, and it only has like a 4 and 3 quarter spread here. Now, I could move this jaw to that side, and be able to do it, uh, you know, especially if if I put if I did it like this, you know, because then basically this area here where there's not going to be any holes drilled, you know, would be over that part of the vise. Uh, but in order to do that, I you know I need to square up this side and this side, um, you know, because I would just be clamping it in like that. Oh, that wouldn't even fit. I'd have to turn it sideways. <laughs> Uh, yeah, which wouldn't work, so, because it's not going to fit that way. I could put the jaw back here, you know, that would work, but I couldn't, uh, can't see that, can you? I could put it, I could put this jaw back here, and, and that would work, but I could only do more or less, uh, uh, spot drilling, and then have to move it and, and drill them again. Uh, you know, it, it won't reach there if I put it on the end because the vise is all the way wide open. It won't fit in here unless I trim it down. Now, it would do that, but then I can't drill any holes close to the edge over here. They'd have to be spot drilled. So rather than mess with the vise and all that, I think what I've uh, decided is I'm just going to clamp it. Now, I measured it. I, was, I, I, wanted, to, I wanted it to fit in the vise because I wanted to face it. Okay? But I've since checked it with a uh, straight edge, and it's really close. Uh, really close. I, I was quite surprised. Uh, these brackets have more warp in them, I'm sure, than uh, 
that plate, yeah, see the rock there? From the laser cutting, they have more warp than uh, this plate does. So, anywho, um, so I'll clamp this plate down. And basically what I'm going to do is set it up. Oh, yeah, and I'll have to do a reverse. I'm going to drill these two holes, and then I'm also going to drill another set for when the bracket gets flipped. Uh, these holes should match either way, and I've set them up so they're all relative to the center hole. So since I know that's roughly where I want it, that's ballpark of center. I will measure it left to right to get it even there. Uh, but here it's pretty arbitrary, so I'll just be somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, I do have the layout drawn on the on a CAD drawing, um, and I think I'll probably end up having to come in after the fact and uh, while it's clamped down and mill, you know, mill some clearance here on that. But that'll beat the heck out of having to mill all four sides and a face and blah 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 and all that stuff. So for a welding jig, I think it'll be plenty close enough. And yes, I know the mill is a disgusting mess. You're more than welcome to come over and clean it. Okay, so I'll have two here. I'll have, you know, another four here. That looks like it ought to work. Okay, so I need it at least kind of sort of square. Because the reality is, you know, if, if the jig is cocked or whatever, well, I just need a little more clearance here. You know, I mean, it'd be like putting the plate on like that big deal as long as I've got room you know I can put the, the clamp down here I mean that's highly exaggerated so you know anything within uh, you know sixteenth even eighth of an inch is going to be close enough so let's just uh, measure to the vise 13 sixteenths oh uh, damn 13 sixteenths Couldn't pull that off again if I tried. Wow. They're, yeah, they're like... They're like exactly there. Wow. Even a blind squirrel finds a nut, huh? But just to be safe, let's turn it like that. And I don't want to crank one side down tighter than the other too soon. Since it is, you know, I've only got the one, two, three blocks in the middle there. For drilling, this is way more than tight enough, but I want to make sure I'm snug enough. Uh, because of the clearancing, you know, I'll have to come in here and do... Uh, I mean, I could do that clearancing with a grinder after the fact, so, you know, it's not that critical, but uh, I do want to make sure that uh, it's clamped down tight enough, so if I do decide to uh, use the mill, which I'm sure I will, uh, it's already set, so I think I've got good clearance. Let's get the, uh, let's get the CAD drawing, let's get the uh, drill chuck set up and that stuff, and... Uh, Go from there. I'm dealing with one of the joys of the round column. I have to pre-plan the difference between make sure that the holes I'm drilling and the bits I'm using and stuff like that uh, are long enough. Okay, so you can see that if I put that in there, it it just makes it, and it'll easily do that. Uh, I do need to raise it up a bit though because uh, if that one goes in, it's yeah, because it only goes up about that far on the chuck. So I'll hit. So i got to raise it anyway. All right, that ought to work. I know that'll put the, the two drill bits through without any problem. And I should have plenty of clearance with this. Yes, so even if I put a longer tap in there for the 3 8 uh, bolt, I'll be good to go. Now let's just use a tape measure because this really is not that critical. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a drill mark here so that if something messes up, i got to come back and put it back in position. I can just drop the bit back down into the dimple I make and 
not have to do anything. Or if I decide that I need to put something else in the center, uh, I'll already have a mark there and I can just drill it later. So let's start with zero, zero. There we go. So I'm thinking the easiest thing to do is, you know, just to move to like that location. And I should have put the measurements in there, but basically what I'll do is since that's my zero, zero line, I go, I come over here, the, the 2.21, 2.221, and then go up 0.327, and then I'll just go down 0.327. Then I'll move over here and go ding, ding. And if I save each one as a subdatum memory point while I'm doing the spot drilling, so that I can come back to it with the tap head. That's like a snot or what? It's about as far down as we're going to go. It's not even an eighth of an inch off here. Yeah, you can just see that. So any lower and all the tension gets taken off the rack that the pinion gear goes on. And we don't want that. So, But the reason I took it down so far is uh, now it will... Uh, I'll have as little spindle sticking out as, as possible. I think that just might work. Just get a rough idea where I need to uh, grind the mill scale off so I can... Because I'll be using the... I'll tack it with the TIG. Well, there we go. All right, let's see if I can get the ground back on here again. think that ought to work. I mean it did uh, just what I wanted it to. Yeah. I'd be able to just flip it over. And... So what I might do, I might put a couple of stands out there, bolts, whatever. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, oh, that's kind of heavy. I mean, I could, I could tack that onto the, ah, 
I made it. The plate's too close to. Jeez, that's heavy. The plate's too close to the edge there, so I mean, you know, I could. I could put a couple outriggers on there and then it would just stand up there like that. You know, and then I could probably just prop on here and just. Well, I think that, uh. That proves the idea, huh? Well, let's see here. We can take the whole thing out. And then when we're putting it together, bring the plate in, drop the plate in, drop a spacer, drop the tab, clamp it down. Yeah, I think I can live with that.